Okay, we're back at home now. It's the next day, and I thought we might try to refine this spatula that I made while I was out in the woods. I didn't really intend it to be more than single use, but I brought it home, and I quite like it. So, let's see if we can actually tidy it up. I've got my Mora Swedish carving knife, which we're going to use today. Now, I thought I would also just explain, earlier in the video, you'll have seen me doing some things that you might think look unsafe, in particular cutting towards myself. Let me explain how that works. It is actually possible to make cuts towards yourself quite safely. One of the ways to do this is to make sure that your hand is the thing that's going to hit you rather than a knife. So, for example, cutting towards yourself like this, if I slip, it's my hand or my fist that's going to hit me, not the blade. Similarly, when we're cutting into little areas like this, it's the handle of the blade that's going to hit me if I slip, not the blade itself. If I was, if I was holding it up here like this, then obviously that blade could hit me when I slip, but if I'm holding it like so and applying controlled pressure, then it can't. Just to say that this this knife is wonderful. Look at look at the way this look at the way this just takes off effortlessly. Little delicate shavings like that. I'm gonna be able to get a good finish with that, just without any sanding at all. Similarly there's a cut like this where you can you can cut you're doing a pull cut, but using your body to control the pull. So rather than doing this, where you, if it slips, you're just free. If you do this, you're kind of working against your own body and it enables you to have very, very controlled cuts. And the same thing is true down here. Again, you can cut towards yourself if you're cutting in such a way that when the knife slips and runs aground, it's gonna hit your hand or your fist or the handle of the knife is going to hit you rather than the blade. So don't worry, I've got it all under control. Anyway, let's crack on and see if we can just refine this spatula a little bit. This knife is so wonderfully sharp, look at this. Wonderful little bit of steel, this thing. It just takes off beautiful little shavings like that. So we're going to be able to make some very delicate shaping adjustments to this spatula. So even here again I can cut towards myself if the grain is allowing me to. Let's find the... So there's a place where I could cut towards myself because I make sure that if I slip it's the handle that hits me not the blade. So for example here because it's not always convenient to hold the workpiece by the smallest part. It's not even always safe to do that. You have to apologize for the dog barking in the background. Nothing I can really do to stop her doing that. But this way, we can just take off the most delicate little shavings off the high points here, and we can avoid sanding altogether. So it's possible this way to actually get a finish that requires no sanding just by literally taking off the peaks of all the previous cuts. Hello dog! Mm. Hello? Now you're going to have to be patient or you can go back indoors. What you want a chair to sit on, you can't sit on those chairs. What was that noise? Okay, so I've actually slimmed down the head of this spatula a little bit, just really to make it a bit neater and more refined and smaller. I've also managed to shave off all of the staining that it acquired yesterday from cooking the pasta dish. So 
we've ended up with a smaller spatula, but I quite like it. Now we've got a decision to make because up at the other end of the, the handle, well, I'll show you what I did. So when I was axe carving this, pretty much as an afterthought, I was going to put a little knob on the end of it, but it's off at an angle and there's a big knot there and it's a bit crooked as well. So um, I think what we're actually going to do here is shorten this handle to about there and then just bring it to a little nice little taper, just a tapered rounded end. So, yeah, we're going to cut off about here, I reckon. Good. and then we can just and again I'm you might think my thumbs are at risk here but look what's happening when I I'm looks from your point of view in the camera it looks like I'm cutting towards my thumb here but in fact I'm not I'm cutting in such a way that if it slips nothing hits me Another way to control the cut very carefully is by pushing the blade like this with your thumb. Now this birch that I carved this from was not freshly fallen so this wasn't strictly green wood and you can see there's a little bit of spalting in there which where it's actually started to decay. A fungus has attacked this and made some inroads into the timber. so. I don't think that will affect the usability of this spatula. There is a tiny little bit here in the blade of the spatula, but I don't think it's going to matter. If for no other reason then, well, I, I think it's probably birch polypore that will have um, attacked this timber, which is not toxic, it's just not edible, um, but also we don't cook our spatula. You'll notice that when I use this, I rest it across the top of the pan rather than in the pan. It's a trick my mother taught me. You shouldn't cook your wooden spoons. So I never leave the wooden spoon boiling in whatever I'm cooking. I always lay it across the top of the pan because well, it just ruins the spoon if nothing else anyway. So I'm just going to tidy up this handle and try and smooth it up a little. It's still going to be a little bit wonky, but I'm going to tidy it up and make it into something that's presentable enough to stay in the kitchen. Okay, I'm probably going to stop in a minute because I think I've probably gone as far as I want to. Now it is possible by making ever more delicate cuts to achieve a completely smooth round profile. My skills aren't quite there yet for that so I need to make sure that I just don't carry on shaving away until there's nothing left. So there's a little bit of a difficult area right here where we've got a knot and so I've had to go ever so careful across that and unfortunately what happens is you shave one way and it digs in the other way and so yeah just got to be really careful around that bit. Fortunately, this knife is so wonderfully sharp that it takes almost no pressure at all to make light shaving cuts like this. Almost no effort involved in shaving off a fine little bit of wood like that. And if any, if at any point the knife digs in like it just did there 
You just need to reverse the direction and come at it from the other angle. But as I say, I'm going to stop now because we are at the limit of my skill now and I will develop that skill on other items. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that actually. That's good enough that that's going to go in the kitchen drawer and I will use it for making sauces and so on. I'm going to give it a light coating of oil so it doesn't get stained. So it's mid-December, let's have a look at this moai head that I carved from a cinder block back in the summer. Now it's taken on quite a nice patina actually, mostly algae by the look of it. I think actually most of the yoghurt coating that I painted on there, at least the outside bit, just flaked off and washed away but obviously some of the nutrients have gone into the concrete or into the cement and provided enough of a foothold for algae to prosper. I think there's a little slug or a woodlouse or something tucked up in the ear there. That's just fine by me. So anyway, that's the uh, Moai head. I think, we, I think we said we were gonna call him Manuel. So that's the progress on Manuel. Let's go and have a look at the experiments because I didn't take them down. So these are the original experiments to determine which coating would provide a patina the quickest. So that's the control, there's nothing on that one at all. That one was yoghurt, that one was moss, uh, that one was lichen, that one was horse poo, and that one was everything. And obviously the every, everything one has done pretty well, pretty balanced result there, but it does look like the moss one, which is what I used for the fence here on Manuel, is the one that's actually provided the quickest actual natural looking patina. So that's the update on Manuel the Moai. Now I don't know whether he's going to survive the winter because when we get frost into that porous surface we may find that that surface starts to spall away but we will see. Okay right so today I'm just going to be tasting a couple of things that were sent to me by Nalam27 from the Czech Republic starting with these Krupke I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Somebody will no doubt correct me in the comments. These are like a wheat uh, corn puff flavoured with what looks like peanuts and maybe cashews. So I'll tell you what we need with this is beer. Now this is Pilsner Urquell. Urquell? I don't know how you pronounce that either. There's going to be loads of comments about pronunciation no doubt. This is supposedly, according to Nalan27, the best beer in the Czech Republic. Now, I imagine there'll be some argument about that too, but let's have a taste of this Pilsner. Oops, a bit too much foam there. I think that's pretty good. Certainly a very good example of its type. Right, so, let's just have a little taste of these peanut snacks. Hmm, okay. So for British viewers, I could best describe these as peanut butter flavored Watsits. <laughs> Definitely, that's what they are. They're corn, very light corn puffs, flavored with peanut, nutty flavor, really good. And nice and salty, goes down well with beer. Hmm. Okay, now, the other and kind of exciting thing I've got to try today is this, which is utapensi, and it's pickled sausages. So, this is a very popular bar snack, apparently, in the Czech Republic, so you go in a bar or a pub, or the equivalent of, and this is something that you're going to get served from the bar from a great big jar of them. 
So, let's have a look. Now, get a chance to use this thing today as well. So, oh, it's like the, the grabby thing at the fairground. Okay, now I understand that these are normally served with just a bit of bread. So, couldn't get Czech bread. Get down, dog. Eva, <coughs> shut up. Couldn't get Czech bread, so I got Polish bread. But I got the kind of rye type whole wheat that I thought would be closest to what these might be served with. And so yeah, in a bar in the Czech Republic, apparently you might just get a little bit of bread and one of these pickle sausages with your beer. So, now, now M27 thinks I might not like these, so let's give it a try. Let's have a, it's a kind of squashy sausage. Let's have a quick taste. Mmm. Well, you can t definitely taste the pickling. It's like a Frankfurter type sausage, I suppose, but a little bit more meaty and textured. And yeah, it's just got a nice smoky taste, bit of paprika in there. And you can just taste it's been pickled. It's really good. Um, okay, so this little segment here I shot after the meal that you've just watched us start to eat. I thought we'd just have a little bit more of a reasoned reflection on these products because as you can tell I was in a bit of a hurry to get dinner started so that was a bit of a rush job tasting these things. Let's have a little bit of reflection about what they're really like. So to start with these uh, Krupke peanut flavoured corn puffs. Yeah they're really interesting because let's get a couple out and then we put the packet aside. They're really interesting because they are just like corn puffs. We get typically get these in a cheesy flavour here in the UK, but these are peanut flavour. But it's like they've been rolled in peanut butter, so all of the peanut it, all the peanut flavour is on the outside. And that does actually make them surprisingly nutty, and it makes them a great accompaniment for beer. And yeah, this uh, I've got one can of this left. So I think I might have seen this in the Polish supermarket. We're in the international supermarket, but I've never bought it before and I've never tried it before. And I'm more of a dark beer person myself, but this had a nice full bodied flavor. We're not too acidic and yeah, a nice satisfying beer actually. So in, I enjoyed that. And then finally the Utopensi pickled sausages. Now I just found these quite delightful. They're just like a nice meaty soft I don't know, Germanic style sausage. So a bit like a Frankfurt, a bit like a Danish sausage, that sort of thing. Smooth and fairly soft pork interior. Nice snap when you bite into them. And slightly smoky flavor, slightly paprika, and slightly pickled. And they're just a delight, actually. And they do combine incredibly well with beer. I kind of wish we had things like this in the pubs in the UK, because I think that's a tremendous bar snack, and I really enjoyed that. I guess the question is, does it go with beer? Yes, it does. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's probably all we're going to do now because I'm making my guests wait while I sit here and taste these things. We're going to get stuck into this with some cheese and crackers. So thank you so much for watching. Happy Christmas, and I hope to see you again soon.